This is a concept with which we're all familiar, STEM. You know, we hear it from educators, we hear it from our politicians. You know, it's even become a regular discussion for our library, at our libraries to promote and facilitate STEM. It's all STEM, but I'm here to talk about STEAM. When we hear about STEAM, <clears throat> it's usually initiated from artists, creatives, and other non-tech people. The thing is, I'm a pretty hardcore technologist, and I would not be here without all important A. My background starts back in the dark arcades of the 70s. Who would have known that my journey would lead me to the science of programming, to the technology of the personal computer, the field of software engineering, and the language of math? Learning enough of it to build an amazing set of tools so that I could apply art to all of STEM in order to create the games that I'm best known for, which include Commander Keen, Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, and Quake. So for me, it all really starts in Tucson, Arizona, the place where I spent the first part of my childhood. As a Yaqui and Cherokee Native American, I lived just off the Yaqui Reservation. You see, we lived in one of the poorest parts of Tucson back in the late 60s and 70s. And let me tell you, STEM was nowhere to be seen in that hot desert. <laughs> STEM was not even visible to me as a kid. You know, access to STEM was for the privileged. I didn't know what a chemistry set looked like, and I didn't even know what chemistry was. Engineering was something that your dad did in copper mines. And technology was a cash register, a radio, a telephone. You know, as much as we talk about bringing STEM to kids, we're fooling ourselves if we think that that's something that everyone has access to in schools. Or even fewer people have access to it at home. But there's one thing that all kids have access to that is ab absolutely required for STEAM, and it's the tools of art. It's the A. Everyone can draw. They can create art. It's accessible and it's visible to everyone. And art is a gateway to STEM for kids, or shall we say, STEAM. The arts and humanities are typically presented as opposite of science and technology, except that I never saw it that way. I saw video games as the intersection of art and science. As a kid, I started out drawing on paper just like everyone else. And that can actually turn into a 3D modeling position on a game team. And kids love writing stories, writing fiction is such a creative hobby that it can eventually lead to an adult authoring narratives for digital stories within advanced computer tools. And kids who built castles out of Legos, out of Lincoln Logs, Tinker Toys, and Erector Sets, they found out how to build with logic and they learned how to code a computer so they could continue being highly creative but within the constraints of the computer technology. I believe that programming is highly creative, it's logic-based art. These kids didn't feel that they lost their creativity when they became technologically proficient, in fact, it was the opposite. They were now able to explore their boundless imaginations and make an idea come to life for others to experience. STEM without the A is just dead. STEM with the A is ideas and it's innovation. And it's how we change the world. So let me go deeper into my own story. I fell in love with pinball machines in the 70s. The flashing lights and the electronic sounds were incredible. In the mid-70s, my mom got divorced, got remarried, and then we moved to Northern California. <clears throat> and there were amazing video games in Rockland, and I got totally hooked on them. And it was the true beginning of the Cambrian explosion of technology enabling art and design. I played video games as much as I could, but they cost money, and when you're a poor kid, money is hard to come by. But one day, a friend of mine came over to my house 
and he told me that there was a place where we could play games for free. So obviously, I hop on my bike, and I follow him as fast as I could to the local community college, which was Sierra College in Rockland, California. And that was when I first saw a computer for, the, that's when I saw a computer for the very first time, except it was a mainframe, and it filled up an entire room, and there were 25 terminals connected to it. But it was through these terminals that I started playing computer games which were very different from arcade video games. They're more thoughtful, and you could take your time playing them. Soon enough, I started learning how to program on this mainframe, and I started writing my first adventure games. I spent a lot of my free time trying to program computers <clears throat> at the college, at the high school I was in, and in any computer store that had a computer on display that they would let me touch, such as Radio Shack. <laughs> When my parents bought an Apple II Plus in 1982, I was basically done going outside. <coughs> <laughs> my life was in front of that Apple computer for years. And it took those years of hard practice, writing lots of different kinds of games, to become decent at programming, so then I could actually focus on design. And that focus on design is actually what changed everything. It was a major reason why our games in the early 90s redefine the game industry. Design is creativity, design is art, and art is the most important variable in the STEAM equation. Because design is the real power behind programming. Without a good design, the time you spend programming is basically wasted. And I would say that design is the real power behind any kind of technology because without a great design, the technology can't carry the entire product by itself. Sure, you've all experienced this. You're watching a new movie with the latest special effects. But the movie feels hollow. It's not engaging. It's missed the mark somehow. Well, what it's missing is a really great design. Have you ever used a technology that's been produced in different incarnations by lots of different companies? You could always choose the best one, though, because it had the best design. Have you ever used a, Dy a Dyson Cyclone vacuum? No bags needed. That's some great design. <clears throat> How about an iPhone or an iPad? Incredibly intuitive and powerful user interface, particularly when you think about the phones that came before it. In many cases of products that are proclaimed to be the best, the reason is usually because of superior design, superior art. And art gives meaning to technology. Can you imagine a Tesla Model S without its brilliant mixture? of technology and design. To me, games represent the greatest potential for moving everything in the world forward a step. Because games are fun to play, when you can easily get people to engage with your game, what else can you do with that game? How about using games to teach math, but doing it in a stealth way so the player feels like they're solving puzzles when in fact they're being exposed to some significant math concepts? Or how about using games to teach people how to socialize with others? So many games today are multiplayer and they allow players to just hang out and talk with each other, but more than that, they allow players to express themselves in ways that you just can't in real life. How about games in health? The iPad has made huge strides in this area with games that exercise the brain to help with the recovery of speech and motor skills for victims of stroke. And even within companies, using games is incredibly useful to motivate teams in ways that they never would have thought possible. So for a better future, we need to keep the A in STEAM, to bring the kids in the door faster, and to give more meaning to the various disciplines of STEAM, of STEM. <laughs> this is STEM, and this is STEAM. Thank you very much.